I'm the last man out of my helicopter. As I reach for the rope to go, I look over at my crew chief. My crew chief's standing right here. His name is Ned Norton. Ned looks like Darth Vader at this point because he's got the black helmet on. He's got the visor down. He's got the mask on. And he's looking at me. He did, Ned had put this sticker across his helmet that said, No Fear. It was in black and white, or red, white, and blue. And he was, he was all excited about this sticker because apparently he, he was proud of it. He was yelling at everybody as we're all going out, No Fear! Man! You know, I'm, like, I'm looking at him, and he looks at me and says, Remember, No Fear! I'm like, Screw you! You know? <laughs> You can hear gunfire going off, and Todd Black were just falling out of the aircraft. There's no fear. I, I, I was scared. I'm not lying. And it's easy for a guy to tell you no fear who's flying away. All right? So he said, no fear. Okay. But when I hit the ground, we were right where we needed to be. We were really from here to that wall. 35 minutes later, the mission is done. The Delta operators got 12 people that were on our most wanted list. We're in that building. Now, Deed wasn't in the building. He wasn't supposed to be there. But we got 12 of his bad guys. They brought him out. Had them flex cuffed up. The Humvees that were waiting with the other Rangers pull up real quick, put the bad guys on the trucks, trucks drive away. The rest of us are waiting to go home. When we hit the ground, there were people shooting, but it wasn't that bad. And I still, as many times I've told this story, it always sounds funny to me that I would say there were people shooting, but it wasn't that bad. It, it wasn't bad because they were missing, which is that if people shooting at you, that's what you want. Okay, just remember that. Have, make them miss, all right? Think small. So, 35 minutes later, mission's done. We're all waiting to get home. We're waiting for Expo. Mission's done. And I'm, I'm seriously thinking, man, I'm a, we're, we're combat veterans. I, I'm going to finish this letter to my mom. We, I could get a VA loan now. Uh, all right? It's going to be great. Well, that is when the first helicopter got shot down. I was on a day off from training. I wasn't even supposed to be at work. And there, you may, well, it's not fair. You know, I know it's not fair, but there it is. And what are you going to do about it? You're going to do the right thing is what you're going to do. We were done with the mission, waiting to go home. And just like that, the helicopter gets shot down. That wasn't even supposed to happen. But we knew what we were supposed to do. Now the mission's changed. The bird crashes five and a half blocks that way. So it was about three blocks this way, and then a left-hand turn up here to go secure it. So the mission's changed. We're all going to move on foot. Because we knew what happened. If there was nobody there to help those guys, we knew what, what their chances were. Because the bad guys were already running that way. And they weren't going to make it if we didn't get there in time. So the mission's changed, and we've got to pick up and go. My squad is about the last group of guys now. I'm watching everybody moving down both sides of the street, and they're heading down that way to make that big left-hand turn. About 120, 130 guys are moving this way now. Just as we get ready to go, I see Doug, my buddy from Texas. Doug is holding his neck, and he runs into the medic, and he goes inside the building like this. And about three minutes later, Sergeant Watson has followed him in, comes back out to me and goes, he goes, Bourne's been hit. He goes, you're in charge. I go, what happened to him, Sergeant? He goes, Bourne's been hit. You're in charge. I go, is he going to be okay? What's wrong with him? He goes, he goes hey. Hey, Sergeant Thomas, look at me. He says, you're in charge. And I, didn't, I didn't want that responsibility. I didn't ask for it. That's not fair. I, you're right. It's not, it's not supposed to happen. Doug shouldn't be getting hurt. You're right. I agree. But there it is. And what are you going to do about it? I knew what to do because I had trained for it. I would planned on it. So I took, they gave me the radio. I took Doug's radio, clipped it on my hip, handed a medical bag over to the Jesus. The Jesus, dude, you're the team leader now. Roger, sorry. I'm Puerto Rico. Everybody's a team leader. And I'm so glad you're on my side. <laughs> Saransky, look after Floyd. Floyd, look after Saransky. Follow me. We're going to make it out of here. Do what you know is right. I get about five steps down the road, and Floyd starts yelling, hey, he's in the tree, Sergeant, he's in the tree. What? Well, there was a guy. Remember I told people shooting at us? Well, this guy was getting closer. And nobody could actually figure out who the guy was that was shooting at us that was getting close. But Floyd sees him. And Floyd, as he's pointing out, he's in the tree, Sergeant, he's in the tree. And Sergeant Watson hears him from across the street and goes, Floyd, what is it? What? He's, he's in the tree, sorry. He says, yeah, I heard you the first time. Do you see him? Yeah, sorry, he's in the tree. Well, if you see him, why don't you shoot him? <laughs> and that, uh, seriously, the light bulb I saw, it go out, bing, right? <laughs> Floyd's thinking, oh, I enlisted into the Ranger Regiment as a machine gunner. <laughs> That's my job. And he, but you know, his helmet got, he, the poor guy looked like Barney Fife, all right, you know, and he, his helmet got straighter, he put it down, he charged the weapon system, and they teach you when you shoot a machine gun, it gets fired in what's called a five to a seven round burst. And that's because they don't want to overheat the barrel. So it sounds sort of like this, it's like, kak, 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 Well, Floyd, Floyd was a little bit excited, and he's over in the corner, and he's like, kak, 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 I'm like, Floyd, stop, and the barrel's glowing. And, you know, he is from South Kakalaki, and like a little redneck that he was, he stands up and he goes, he puts his goggles and he goes, hey, did I get him? <laughs> I'm like, Floyd, I don't, 
I, I'm telling y'all the truth. I, I don't know if you got him, Floyd, but you got the whole tree. I mean, seriously. You go, <laughs> That's a technique. You know, it works. So we all, now we get moving. We're running down the street. When we make that left-hand turn towards the crash site, that's when everything got bogged down. And people always ask me, well, was it like the movie? And I said, well, at that point, it was nothing but Hollywood. It was silly. There were so many rounds going out. There were so many rounds coming in. And you really didn't, it's hard to tell where they were coming from. But I felt, to me, it sort of felt like training. You, know, you shoot, you move, you communicate, you're getting your guys in position. Everything feels like training until, until somebody gets hurt. And when good people start going or down around you, something happens to you. It snaps you into a whole different level of reality.